Hey guys, what's up? It's JDOC back here again, and since the 2017 season is just on the horizon, I think it's time to recap the 2016 season. So, as we all know, the 2016 season all started with the Vikings trying to get over this. Blair Walsh from 27 yards left hash. Snap good, spot down, Walsh's kick is up, and it is no good, he missed it! Are you kidding me? The season can't end like that! He missed it left! And the Seattle Seahawks are off to Charlotte. Blair Walsh missed a 27-yard field goal, and the Minnesota Vikings are going to lose 10-9. to 9. Yes, that. We don't want that to happen again. So, the ups and downs of the season started. We started out the season undefeated in preseason, uh, beating the Bengals 17-16, Seahawks 18-11, Chargers 23-10. That Chargers game was the last game that... Uh, Teddy Bridgewater was in, and the Rams we won 25 to 20, 27 to 25. Now, the, our offseason moves included bringing in Andre Smith, the right tackle, and that was mainly our only thing we did in the offseason. Uh, we drafted Laquan Treadwell, who we were hoping to be our big red zone target. Uh, we got Mackenzie Alexander in the second round, and they both didn't play a whole lot throughout the year at all, which I'm sure you guys all know. And now let's talk about the regular season. So, Teddy tears his ACL. Uh, we trade for Sam Bradford, which got scrutinized. People are thinking it was crazy. Titans game, he's not starting in Sean Hill. So, Titans, our defense carries us over the Titans. We all thought we could beat him either way. Sean Hill carries us 25-16 win over the Titans. A good game. Really started to get our defense on the right, off on the right foot. Now, week two, first game of the uh, ever at U.S. Bank Stadium, the first regular season game, and we our defense carries us. Sam Bradford outplays Aaron Rodgers as we beat the Packers 17 to 14 at home. Now, week three, I thought this was a big highlight win for us, but ended up not being that big of a deal. But Carolina Panthers, we go to we go to Charlotte. And we beat them in their home field 22 to 10. And I thought this was big at the time because they're, of course, uh, NFC champs. But then, of course, they have a, such a poor season this year. And now we go back home and we play the Giants. And this is highlighted by Xavier Rhodes absolutely shutting down Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, talent or um, emotions aside, you can't argue that Odell Beckham, talent wise, is near the top of the league. Probably at the very least top three in the league talent-wise as wide receiver. And Xavier Rhodes absolutely shut him down as we beat the Giants 24-10. And then we play the, the Texans at home. Again, we dominate again 31-13 at home as we start up the season 5-0. and And now this happened. It's way too much of this. Bradford's on the on the ground, and we don't know what to do. TJ Clemens is playing. Uh, as the as those games went on, we lost Matt Khalil. TJ Clemens goes to the left tackle. We signed uh, Jake Long. He tears his ACL. He's done. He's probably gonna retire now. Uh, Andre Smith gets hurt. He was playing poorly anyways, but he's gone. Uh, we start to lose everybody. Um, Adrian Peterson gets hurt for the year. That was in week two. And our whole team's crippling, but we're 5-0. and We think, okay, whatever happens, we'll battle through that adversely, and we'll get through it. Well, it starts to hurt. The Eagles, we go to Philadelphia, and they beat us 21-10 as Bradford can't seem to stand upright. And then we go to Chicago, and it's the Bears. We're thinking, easy win. We'll bounce back it back into our winning ways. But nope, our offense can't do anything. We lose 20 to 10. And then we go to Detroit. Well, we can't be the Bears, so maybe we can beat the Lions. Nope, we beat them 20. Or we get, we, get, we lose that game as well, 22 to 16. And then we go to Washington and lose to the Redskins, 26 to 20. This is all highlighted by our injury-filled offensive line. Uh, Sullivan and Lodholt retired, or Sullivan left. I thought we should have just kept him. Uh, which was hindsight 2020, but I thought either way he would be at least be good depth at center. And uh, then we could have Joe Berger play right guard, but he was gone. 
Phil Lowell at right tackle. He was retired. His Achilles injury was too much for him. And I was really getting apparent this time of year. Laquan Treadwell, I think he was inactive all these games as well. Very disappointed there. And this is about the time where we see Blair Wallace start losing us a few games as well. I think the Detroit game would have been one if we had opted, if we had a good kicker. The Bears game would have at least been closer if we had a, a different kicker. So this is where we start really questioning Blair Walsh. Can he bounce back after that Seattle lose? As I have to lost that Seattle game for us. So now uh, we go back home. The Cardinals come to town and we beat them 30 to 24. A close game, but the Cardinals were really bad on the year, so I don't think it was that big of a deal to beat them. But it was a bounce back game for sure. After five wins, then we get up with four losses. Finally, we get another win. Now we're sitting there at six and four. And now it's Thanksgiving. We go to Detroit for the Thanksgiving game, and we lose a heartbreaking overtime game, 16 to 13, as Matt Prater sends the Lions past us as they're looking to win the division at this point. And the Vikings are just trying to stay in the race and hope that we we still have confidence that they can still win the wild that we can at least get the wild card. Uh, now we go back home and the Cowboys go to town and the Cowboys were at least were of course were the best team in the NFC. And I think we should have won this game. Uh, I talked about this in my game review. We we lost 17 to 15. Ooh, there was that face mask at the end of the game that wasn't called. Uh, we were in position. Pretty much the whole time. Uh, very At the very end of the day, the Cowboys were supposed to dominate us, and we were, they barely beat us. So I thought it was a good will game for the Vikings to show that they're still competent. But at this, t- this point, we have to win out to get in the playoffs and still s- have a slight chance to win the division, but it's going to take a lot of luck. So now we go to Jacksonville and we squeeze out barely beating the Jaguars 25 to 16. Then this is where the season's all but ends is we go to play the Colts in Indianapolis and we get absolutely we get the Vikings horns handed to us as we lose 34 to 6, the most disappointing game of the year. And then we go to Green Bay, lose 38 to 25, nails in the coffin. Last game of his career for Chad Greenway, we go back home and beat the Bears 38-10 to as players are fighting for their jobs at this point. So there we have it. We went from be almost should have, would have, should have, could have, would have beat the Seahawks in the last year's playoffs. Starting out 5-0, and season expectations couldn't be any higher to completely blowing it. I don't, I don't think I need to tell you guys this, but... It was quite the disappointment for the Vikings. Now, that was the 2016 season. The 2017 season is looking like, well, if we don't get injuries, we should be back into the hunt. I think that is very likely. Uh, In the beginning of of last year, we thought we had a really good defense. Some guys got injured along the way, but it still was fairly well. Uh, It stumbled a few games, but still was one of the best defenses in the league for having to be on the field for so long because their offense was so bad. But there we have it. There's a 2016 season review. Uh, if you are a big fan of the Vikings, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next JWC Vikings video. See ya.